In the hazy realm of television nostalgia, where moments of laughter and insight fuse into timeless memories, there exists a gem that first flickered across screens in 1972. Ah, uh, yes, The Bob Newhart Show, a show that wasn't merely a series. It was an embrace of comedic brilliance and human connection. Do you remember that first encounter, the way those initial notes of the theme song gently tiptoed into your consciousness, a precursor to the laughter that would ensue? Perhaps it was the sharp wit of Bob Newhart himself, his deadpan humor serving as a mirror to life's quirky predicaments. Or was it the cozy familiarity of his psychology practice, nestled on the corner of your TV screen, where a parade of peculiar patients would parade in and out, leaving laughter in their wake? Picture this, Bob's bemused expressions as he navigates the eccentricities of his patients, a therapist straddling the line between solving the troubles of others and grappling with his own hilariously relatable neuroses. Who could forget the banter with his wife, Emily, their interactions a symphony of love, understanding, and those quintessential marriage moments that echoed beyond the screen. And oh, the supporting cast, from the charmingly neurotic receptionist Carol to the steadfast friendship of Howard, and Jerry, they were more than just characters. They were the colors that painted a rich, comic canvas. But wait, let's dive deeper. Beyond the chuckles and guffaws lie the intricate layers that make up this show's legacy. Did you know that the Bob Newhart show broke new ground by exploring the nuances of psychology in a sitcom setting? Its deft touch on serious subjects was like a gentle reminder that life's absurdities can be both a source of comedy and a mirror to our own humanity. And yes, there's more where that came from, a treasure trove of random facts that unveiled the fascinating tapestry woven by the creators, actors, and crew. So, as we step into the realm of trivia, let's remember that beyond the guffaws and the quirky anecdotes, the Bob Newhart show captured an era, a spirit, and a camaraderie that continue to echo in the hearts of its fans. Who would have thought that a therapy couch could hold so much laughter? And who could have foreseen that a show from 1972 could remain as fresh? and relevant as ever, an enduring testament to the magic of television. And now, with curiosity peaked and nostalgia tingling, let's journey together through the corridors of fascinating facts about this iconic show, each detail a brushstroke in the larger masterpiece. For as Bob Newhart once quipped, laughter gives us distance. It allows us to step back from an event, deal with it, and then move on. So, shall we step back and delve into the enchanting world of the Bob Newhart show? Let's embark on this delightful exploration, where the past meets the present and laughter knows no boundaries. Actor Peter Boners, renowned for his portrayal of Jerry the Dentist in the iconic 1972 TV series The Bob Newhart Show, harnessed the set as a launchpad for his directing career. Boners, while playing the witty dentist, seized the opportunity to learn the ropes of directing behind the camera. His apprenticeship on the show laid the foundation for his future accolades as an award-winning director of various comedy series. Boner's transition from on-screen to off-screen talent mirrors the multifaceted nature of the entertainment industry. His journey from a recurring character to a celebrated director underscores the collaborative and dynamic nature of the show, fostering an environment of growth and experimentation. As the Bob Newhart show carved its place in television history, Peter Boners evolved from a skilled actor into a director with an innate understanding of comedic timing and storytelling. His directorial finesse echoes the legacy of the show, a testament to the unique opportunities that can emerge within the creative crucible of a beloved sitcom. Indeed, the sitcom's legacy continues to ripple through time, encapsulating not only the humor and wit of its characters, but also the transformative journeys of its cast and crew. Peter Boner's trajectory from Jerry the Dentist to a lauded director remains a compelling narrative within the broader story of the Bob Newhart show. And so, behind the laughter and camaraderie on screen, a tale of artistic growth and reinvention unfolds, exemplified by Peter Boner's enduring contributions to the world of television comedy. The office locale of a beloved 70-second sitcom, unveiling the Michigan Avenue connection in the realm of classic 1970s television. Few shows have etched their mark as indelibly as The Bob Newhart Show. Among its many endearing facets, the iconic series showcased Bob Hartley's professional life as a psychologist. While the interior of his office was a realm of comedic counseling, the exterior shots of his workplace also harbored a fascinating tidbit that connects the show to real-world architecture. As the camera panned to the facade of Bob's office building, 
audiences were treated to a glimpse of the Bay Federal Bank building on Michigan Avenue. During the show's 1972 inception, this downtown Chicago structure served as the visual backdrop for Bob's professional endeavors. Amidst the humor and therapeutic endeavors, the Bay Federal Bank building stood tall, unwittingly sharing the spotlight with the titular character. Inside this architectural backdrop, Bob's office was strategically perched on the seventh floor, Suite 751. This specific detail added an air of authenticity to the setting, grounding the whimsical world of the Bob Newhart show in a tangible reality. With each episode, as the elevator chimed and doors opened to the seventh floor, viewers were invited into a space that wasn't just a stage set, but an address with palpable presence. Among the ensemble cast that brought this sitcom to life, three individuals left an indelible mark, being the only ones to grace all 142 episodes, Bob Newhart himself, Peter Boners, and Susan Plachette. Their consistency in portraying their characters over the show's six-season run contributed to the enduring legacy of the series, etching their names into television history. While Bob Hartley's comedic therapy sessions took center stage, the architectural choice of the Bay Federal Bank building on Michigan Avenue lent a sense of place and reality to the fictional world. As we revisit the show, we're reminded that even in the realm of comedy, the locations we see on screen can be as captivating as the characters themselves. Lorenzo Music's melodic imprint on the Bob Newhart show theme song Lorenzo Music, recognized as the iconic voice behind Garfield in the 80 Seconds cartoons, and the lovable Carlton the Doorman from Rhoda left an indelible mark on more than just animated characters. Co-authoring the theme song for the 1972 TV series The Bob Newhart Show, music showcased his multifaceted talents. The show, set against the backdrop of a psychologist's life in Chicago, introduced viewers to the everyday trials of Bob Hartley, played by the titular comedian. Yet, beyond the witty dialogue and clever humor, it was the catchy tune that greeted viewers each episode that truly struck a chord. Music's collaboration on the theme song was a harmonious blend of creativity. This lesser-known facet of his career added an extra layer of charm to the show's opening credits. The song's upbeat tempo and memorable melody set the stage for the laughter that would ensue. Lorenzo Music's versatile contributions helped establish the show's identity, resonating with audiences then and leaving an enduring legacy. As the series unfolded, viewers became familiar with Bob Hartley's seemingly exaggerated commute from his downtown Chicago office to his home in Edgewater. This quirky detail raised eyebrows among Chicago natives, including Newhart himself, who hailed from the Windy City. Jokingly, Newhart mused about the plausibility of trusting a therapist who perennially missed his stop on the L train. Despite the whimsical geography of Hartley's commute, the Bob Newhart show remained a beloved classic, capturing the essence of relatable urban life and presenting it with a comedic twist. The show's resonance went beyond the screen, forging connections that extended to the talents behind the scenes, such as Lorenzo Music's contributions to its catchy theme song. In an unforeseen twist of fate, the show's casting took an unexpected turn. Susan Plachette, an integral part of the series as Emily Hartley, was discovered almost by accident. Her appearance beside Bob Newhart on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson radiated an undeniable chemistry. Producers seized the opportunity, inviting Plachette to audition, leading to her iconic role as Emily alongside Newhart's Bob. As we celebrate the legacy of the Bob Newhart show, let's not forget the intricate symphony that composed its essence. From Lorenzo Music's harmonious notes to Suzanne Plachette's accidental star turn, the series remains a testament to the unpredictable yet delightful nature of television history. In the annals of television history, few shows have captured the essence of everyday humor quite like The Bob Newhart Show, which debuted in 1972. Amidst its standout cast and witty writing, one peculiar fact remains hidden in the show's early days. Penny Marshall, who would later earn fame for her directorial prowess, stealthily made her mark on the show's debut. Before assuming her regular role as Miss Larson, Marshall graced the first episode as the stewardess. This subtle entrance foreshadowed her later prominence in the series, providing a unique twist to her involvement. But the show's heart rested in its characters' backgrounds. Bob Newhart hailed from the bustling streets of Chicago, bringing his Midwest charm to the small screen. His foil, Emily, hailed from the picturesque city of Seattle, infusing a touch of West Coast flair into the show's dynamic. 
Behind the scenes, an intriguing evolution was at play in the script writing. At the outset, writers would pen the line Bob reacts, an indication of the customary response expected from comedic actors. Yet, as time unveiled Bob Newhart's consistent reactions to various comedic situations, the writers abandoned the practice. Bob's inimitable style rendered the annotation unnecessary, highlighting the singular nature of his comic timing. In retrospect, the Bob Newhart show encapsulated more than just laughs. It was a testament to the interplay of actors, characters, and the evolution of comedic writing. As fans look back, they can relish the nuance of Penny Marshall's dual roles, the city-inspired chemistry between Bob and Emily, and the unspoken language of Bob's comedic timing. As we take a leisurely stroll down memory lane with the Bob Newhart show, we're reminded that the world of television has a unique way of etching itself into our hearts and minds. Whether you found yourself chuckling at Bob's dry wit, rooting for his quirky patience, or simply enjoying the camaraderie of the show's characters, there's something undeniably special about the connection we forge with the stories that grace our screens. As you reminisce about the charm of a 1970s Chicago apartment, and the hilarious misadventures of Dr. Bob Hartley, perhaps you're transported back to a time when laughter was simpler, yet profound. It's in those shared moments of laughter that we find a common thread, one that transcends time and technological leaps. So, whether you're a longtime fan who caught the show during its original run or a newer viewer who discovered it through streaming platforms, your personal connection to the Bob Newhart show is a testament to the enduring power of television to shape our memories and bring us joy. I encourage you to share your favorite memories, anecdotes, and thoughts about the show. How did it resonate with you? Which characters' antics left you in stitches? What life lessons did you glean from the witty dialogues? Your reflections add to the vibrant tapestry of the Bob Newhart Show's legacy. Thank you for taking the time to indulge in this nostalgic journey with me. Your interest and passion keep the spirit of timeless shows alive. Here's to the warmth of television that bridges generations and creates lasting bonds. Until we reminisce again, keep those fond memories close.